Hi everybody, my name is Nick Justician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University and in this video we're going to show how we can record data in Live Link Face on an iOS device and then transfer that data to our computer, bringing it into Sequencer and be able to set it up for editing in Sequencer with reference video and audio all at the same time. So I've got uh, Live Link Face open on my iPhone here on my desk and it is connected to Switchboard so if I had multiple devices I could trigger them all at once with a single Single record button and so what I want to do is record a take now I could click on my uh, phone but I'm also able to use switchboard right so I'll just call this LLF and uh, take one and of course uh, as I typed that it was updated on the iPhone since switchboard is controlling it right now and so let's do a quick test take so hi this is a test hope it works here we go Okay, so I was able to stop and start clicking the button on switchboard. And now if I click this button in the lower left of my iPhone, I should be able to see my take. And there it is, the LLF take one and uh, four seconds of video and uh, all the data will be there. So I'm gonna select this and of course it'll play back and we can see that. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is use this share button to uh, send this through OneDrive. So I'll share it up to uh, OneDrive and then download it to my computer. Uh, when I do that, I will get a zip file and uh, I'll unzip it onto my computer. And, and, and in the meantime, you don't have to watch that. I'm just gonna pause recording for a moment and we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, we're all done there. Let me get rid of this little goofy face and, uh, and this, and, and there we go. Um, okay, so all our files are here. Uh, basically, I had downloaded a zip file uh, from the phone, and I unzipped that, and we've got a, a folder named after the date that this was recorded, and the uh, name and take, the slate and the take, and then we have our payload of files. So uh, the main file that I'm interested in is this uh, Cal CSV. This is the calibrated comma separated values that have all of the uh, captured data. Uh, we also have a video audio file here. This MOV file is a QuickTime file with the uh, audio and video in it. So um, in my Unreal project, if I click on here, I've set up a folder for LLF uh, for Live Link Face import. And so let's uh, make sure that we're ready. Now, obviously I've got a MetaHuman in this scene and it is receiving Live Link data. So let's make sure we have all of our plugins. So plugins, and I will type in Live Link. And of course I've already got Live Link activated. You'll want to have that like uh, on and um, we're going to need this live link face importer. That's also going to be important. That's uh, the plugin that imports the CSV data. And I think we also need the uh, AR kit, um, Apple AR kit face support. So we want, want these on because uh, this is um, enables the, the translation of the, uh, the AR kit data, I believe, uh, for the. Um, metahumans. They, they, they may be optional, but it's nice to have them on. Okay, so let's go ahead and import that CSV file. So right click and import. And I should be able to navigate to my demo folder somewhere in here. Nope, downloads and demo and live link face and this calibrated CSV file. And what I should get immediately is a sequencer file. Excellent. Let's double click to see what we have in here. And sure enough, we have a sequencer with a live link track and that live link track is full of data. So we can scrub through that and see all the values coming in. Uh, but the MetaHuman is moving in response to my iPhone, right? So if I open up my live link window, so window and virtual production live link, we can see the data is coming in still from my iPhone and that's a green light. Uh, we've got this yellow light for LLF one iPhone. So LLF one iPhone, that's our slate and take number and the uh, source. And so we've got live link data on the sequencer. And uh, as long as this is open, we'll see that as a live link source. I think if I close that, that live link source disappears, double click it, and that live link source is back. 
And for this light to turn green, I just need to hit play. And now that data is streaming in through LiveLink. So uh, that's how we move the data, but it's not on the MetaHuman. So all I need to do for that is go down here to uh, my MetaHuman is selected and I go to AR kit and I choose LLF1 iPhone. Okay, so now the MetaHuman is not being driven by my iPhone, but instead being driven by this uh, sequencer. So if I go back to the beginning and hit play, we should see that, uh, there we go, he's uh, performing based on that live link performance. And uh, that's, that's all great. Let's take a look at some other things here. We've got 60 frames a second uh, for our sequence, and uh, that should correspond to the frame rate that was being captured by the iPhone. Now, what I'd like to do is get all this data onto a uh, control board for the face so that I can edit it, and I'd really like to be able to see the video reference and hear the audio. So let's finish up our setup that way. Now, the first step in that is I need to prepare the audio video data into a format that I can easily digest here in Unreal Engine. So I'm going to close this sequence for now. Let's do a save all and make sure everything's committed to disk. And now let's go ahead and process that video file. So let me see if I can find it. Uh, where's my folder? Is this the folder? Yeah. Okay. So we have this uh, LLF1 iPhone MOV. Um, I'm going to use Adobe Media Encoder. Now, you don't have to use Adobe Media Encoder. You can certainly use DaVinci Resolve or FFmpeg, uh, After Effects, Premiere, you know, whatever. Uh, but Media Encoder is uh, something I've got installed and I can use it readily. So uh, to use that, all I'm going to do is take my MOV file and drag that into the encoder. And uh, the last time I used encoder, I was getting a waveform, an audio output. And actually, I'm really happy with that. That's what I want. Let me just double click to make sure that my output directory, yeah, I'm just going to have that wave go into the same folder that it came from. And I'm going to drag, well, can I duplicate it? Right click, duplicate. Yeah, there we go. And instead of a waveform for my second output, I am going to output PNG files. So what this will do, if I select PNG, is it's going to generate a single image file per every frame in this video. Uh, that's pretty traditional, really, for visual effects in feature film and episodic work. Uh, we could export it to EXRs or JPEGs. Um, EXRs tend to get pretty heavy and large. Uh, they're processed perfectly fine by Unreal Engine. JPEGs are smaller on disk, but they involve some processing to open because they're compressed files. Uh, PNGs tend to be a pretty decent middle ground where they don't take as much space as EXRs, um, and they're not as processor intensive in decoding. So we'll uh, go to PNGs, and sure enough, uh, we are at 60 frames a second, so that's good. And I just want to give a uh, destination folder a name here. So uh, rather than the same folder as the other files, it's going to get confusing because there's going to be you know, at least hundreds of these files. So I'm just going to create a new folder and call that PNG with a lowercase s. And then inside there, I'll just call it LLF. Uh, underscore. And what will happen is that uh, each file will get a number after it for the, uh, the frame number for that PNG. So um, we should be good. All right. So I'll go ahead and hit this play button to encode this. And look at that. The waveform file is done and we're getting our PNGs. Let's take a look at what's going on over here. Sure enough, there's my sound file and uh, PNGs are being generated. So while those are cooking, let's go ahead and get our WAV file in here. So uh, back to our file directory, and let's drag our waveform file into our content browser folder here in Unreal. There we go. I'll uh, click on that and Control S to save it. And uh, let's start setting up our sequence too. So I'm just going to double click on the sequence that was created by the import. And what I'm looking for here is, okay, we have uh, 299 frames. So we'll go back and create a new sequence for our edit. So cinematics and level sequence, and we'll call that LLF, uh, LLF underscore one. And... <laughs> 
I'm tabbing terribly today. Uh, edit. There we go. All right. There's wires laying on my keyboard. That's my excuse. And Control S and double click. Let's make sure we have the correct frames per second. So we'll do uh, 60 frames a second instead of 30. And we want to have, oh, look, automatically we got 300 frames. So if we add a track and we make that a subsequent track right here, we should be able to add our LLF, our iPhone track. There we go. And again, our MetaHuman is set to read from the live link track that's in there. So that works out great. Wonderful. And so we can add our audio to this already. And so let's add an audio track and let's add our LLF audio. There it is. And let's see if that plays back well. Hi, this is a test. Hope it works. Here we go. Okay, so obviously we have some editing to do on the face performance, but uh, we're, we're looking pretty good on uh, that audio. Now, of course, that was also recorded by the uh, incoming audio from the, uh, the iPhone microphone. So we just need to get a video reference and we want to bake this. So let's go check on our PNGs and double click. And that's looking good. Let's switch over to Media Encoder. It is all done. So we can close that. And so let's work on getting these PNGs into Unreal as well. Let's do a save all to keep what we've got and right click. We'll go to Media and we're going to use an image media source. And we'll just call this LLF underscore one underscore PNGs. Okay, double click and we will find the sequence path. This doesn't have to be in the project. It's just a reference to those. So uh, this is the right folder and we'll select the first frame and open that. And let's just make sure that our frame rate is 60 frames a second. And that should be good and ready to go. We don't have to worry about seeing it. We just know we got our path set. So let's close that and there he is. All right, save. And finally, back in our sequence, we will add a media track. Where is our media track? Right there at the bottom. And here we will add a media source. There we are. Media, um, this is the one that we're working on now, LLF. And let's make sure that starts at the beginning. And sure enough, we go right to the end because it's 60 frames a second. Very good. And now we want to output this to a texture that we can use in our scene. So I'm going to right click properties and say that we want this to go to a media texture and select a uh, media texture because we're going to create a new asset media texture. And we will put that in our LLF import folder and we will call this LLF underscore one underscore uh, texture. Okay and save that. And so now in our uh, texture that exists, and so let's do a save all, save selected. Let's put an image plane out into our scene. So shapes and plane and bring that a little closer. And there we are. Let's drag this texture onto that plane so that we can see it. And double click this material. We're going to make this a uh, unlit. So instead of default lit here, we're going to change this to unlit. And so therefore the RGB is going to go to emissive and we can disconnect opacity, break that link so that it is solid. Okay. So uh, let's save that. I think I did forget one little piece that I created this texture, but in the sequencer, I didn't fully assign it. So I just need to right click here again, properties. Yeah, see there's nothing assigned here. So let's just make sure that I look for LLF and there's the texture. And now this texture is being sent there and there we are. Now we're able to see that. And so we'll E rotate this into place and W move that over and maybe we'll scale this down and we'll use all the axes. Maybe we just make it a little taller. Okay. And so now I can see the reference of that video with my uh, playback. And finally, our last step is that we want to bake this to the MetaHuman. So I'll select my MetaHuman, add a track to this MetaHuman, uh, or I'm sorry, to the sequencer using the MetaHuman. And 
and let's get rid of our control rig for the face for a moment. There we go. And since the control rig has been removed, we should still, yep, we're still being animated by live link face. And now we can right click on the face and a bake to control rig, face control board and create. This should bake our animation to the control board. And that should be it. So I can right click and mute our live link plugin. And again, just to make sure that's really off, we'll go to virtual production and live link. And we've got yellow. And if we play down here in our sequence, we should get nothing. Correct. So there's no nothing happening here, even when we play. So this is effectively muted and uh, we still get performance because now it is all on the control board. And at this point we have full ability to edit all of this on the control board. So I uh, hope this helps. This gives us a whole process for getting data off of Live Link Face and having it uh, editable in sequencer in Unreal Engine with the control board and we have reference audio and video. Hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.